This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for September 18, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, Holness says the government has the money to fix the bad roads. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says that the government has money to repair roads across Jamaica, declaring that the challenge is not the money, but how to spend it efficiently on the right roads and without corruption. For the first time in a long time in Jamaica's history, your government is in a position to make a budgetary allocation to treat with road repairs, Holness said as he spoke to persons who may have given up hope that the roads will be fixed or have been drawn into schemes to protest. Holness, who was addressing a meeting of the Jamaica Labour Party Central Executive Meeting in Utria St. Anne yesterday, noted that Jamaicans have been demonstrating for better roads in many communities across the country. He said that many of the demonstrations are orchestrated and claimed that some of the demonstrators are being paid to do so. A strike by disgruntled taxi operators disrupted classes and the local transportation network in Westmoreland last week when they blocked the main road between Greenshale and Savannah Lamar and demanded its immediate rehabilitation. Holness told the JLP functionaries to pay close attention to the demonstrations, adding that whether or not they have been orchestrated, we still listen to the voice of our people. If a road is of concern to our community, the government must pay attention to it. I know that there are many communities across the island where since the founding of the community, the roads have not been repaired, Holness said. He said that there are people who have waited for years for their roads to be repaired and warned that they may become frustrated or feel slighted when they see highways being opened while their roads remain in a state of disrepair. He therefore attempted to convince Jamaicans that his administration is in a position to make a budgetary allocation of a reasonable size in a systematic way to fix the country's bad roads. The Prime Minister said a critical part of the government's road improvement plan is the $40 billion road improvement project to modernize more than 2,000 roads island-wide. He said that councillors and the members of parliament will play an integral role in selecting roads for repair. Gary Rowe, a member of the People's National Party from Northeast Manchester's executive group, lost his right of foot six months ago, but he was determined to be physically present for the party's 85th annual conference. Rowe, like other amputees, journeyed from miles across the island to join with the hundreds of comrades who gathered at the National Arena in Kingston on Sunday. They did so because they confidently believe that the leaders they choose from the PNP will better assist them with the care than any other political party in Jamaica. Rowe, whose photo was cut off in March due to diabetes, was also a former candidate for the Craighead division. I had to be here despite the disability that I have now. I lost, but I am still on the ground. Me no gone no way. Me day a same way, Rowe told the news. This conference is significant because it is the People's National Party's 85th annual conference. 85 years. And we are of the view that the ground is swelling for the People's National Party at this time. And we have to come out and show our numbers to show that Mark Golden will become the next Prime Minister of Jamaica in the shortest order. And when they call the parish council local government election, we are going to take all 14 parishes, he said. Coincidentally, Roe was entering the national arena in a queue along with two other individuals on crutches, Leroy Hunter, who is also from Manchester, and the Chester James from St. Anne. For James, he used his one leg to journey to the arena because he believes that a time come for a change as the PNP's new tagline states. We need a change of government, time hard, James briefly told the news. Another amputee, Patrick Roden, who was not admitted inside the national arena because it was filled to capacity when he arrived, said he wants the PNP to win the next election because they have Senator Floyd Morris, who is visually impaired, living with special needs, and can battle for the special needs community from experience. We need some more accessibility for persons with disability in other country. We would want someone to anchor us with disability, and are the greatest thing we are advocate for right now, Roden told the news. When PNP did in a power, them set some plan for persons with disability, like wheelchair ramps and the light posts them move out of the sidewalk, 
and give you wheelchair access and all of these things. I mean, realize when PNP come out of power, everything just stop. So we want to see if I really the PNP make it did a go on. And we don't know why the JLP make it not going on. So we have a problem right there, he said. Another amputee and the wheelchair bound mother, Natasha Grant, told the news that, that the PNP representatives she supports have promised her prosthetic legs, which would cost her $1.4 million, and that she believes that they will soon follow through on their promise. We come here for support our awaiting Member of Parliament, Omar Newell, for Central St. Mary, Pammy Sigfoot. Grant told the news while being wheeled into the national arena by her son, Jerwin Brown. Central St. Mary, a PNP placed that, a Newell placed that, a Dr. Maurice Guy placed that, she said, in reference to the long-standing outgoing PNP MP for the constituency. She told the news that she has been promised by Luthan Cousins of Southwestern Clarendon that she would get help in receiving the prosthetic legs that she needs. USA-bound woman murdered at home Tia Tamira Ferron was counting down the days to reunite with her father in the United States of America. The 20-year-old Charlie Mount High School past student also had plans of joining the U.S. Army. Unfortunately, Ferron's dreams was shattered to pieces on Saturday night after a lone gunman entered her dwelling in Banbury, Linstead, St. Catherine, and shot her multiple times in her kitchen. She died on the spot. According to police report, about 8.50 p.m., residents reported hearing explosions and contacted the Linstead police. Upon the lawman's arrival, Ferron was found lying in a pool of blood with what appeared to be bullet wounds to her upper body. She was taken to the Linstead Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. When the news visited the community yesterday, small groups of persons were seen speaking about the horrific incident. Three of Ferron's relatives sat on the veranda, but they were too distraught to speak with the press. Her grandfather emerged minutes later, and his eyes were teary and swollen. Tia was a nice, jovial, and good little girl. She have manners and everybody in the community like her, he said. Ferron was until recently employed at a call center, but gave up the job as she prepared herself to migrate. She did a plan to join the army, her grandfather said. He said that prior to her death, she was her usual bubbly self and had everyone laughing as she played a game of water war with the children in the household. She a laugh and she even played a game of water war in the yard. One at the time, she sit in one of the car, and she was just happy. We drive, go up the road, and come back. And in the evening, she tell me say she go bake a cake mix, and the two are we in the kitchen. That was the last time I talked to my granddaughter, the grandfather said. The elderly man expressed that Ferron was the stay-at-home type and had no idea someone would want to hurt her. As far as me know, Tia no one in a known problem. She had been here with us. This is where she grew. Her boyfriend is a soldier. So sometimes she would be in Spanish town as well. She isn't the type who is going to be on the road. She's a good little girl, the grandfather said. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.